Well, it's like this. It's like all bodies together become airplane, all bodies together bombard, and all bodies together become victims of the bombardment. It's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it goes like this. Maybe more you yeah, be in front. Yeah, definitely in front. I'm in tail. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in a tight calm. So these, this arm position is a hurtful arm position. So it needs to hurt a little bit. It needs to be so that your muscles <coughs> really go into the fingertips, that you go all the way out there into the fingertips, that it's not easy to do, that you tighten everything up here to push it out there. And then it slowly bends forward. <laughs> and now you just try to stay in the group together. Make sure that your neck doesn't run away from you, that your neck just goes, <laughs> just stays straight. Your eyes are disappearing. So the one rule is the mouse tears open and stays open. And the other moves you make up yourself. And just make sure that they are so mouse open, wide open, as wide as wide as you can get your mouth open. And the rest is very simple repeats. You choose one set of gestures that you keep repeating. You don't improvise. You, you just choose a small amount of gesture and keep repeating it. As l the less you do, the better it is for the rest of us, because we can't take in so much. When you do variations, it's, it's hard to see. What comes the cost strongest is when it's minimal, totally minimal material of gesture repeats of the same thing again and again. Mouth has to stay wide open the whole time. That's your, your similarity to each other. And you don't have to fake sadness or anything when you tear your mouth open. You don't have to be an actor playing a pain. Okay, good. I want to just 
pay all your attention to, you know, one the protest technique over the decades of all these wars has been vigiling. Uh, often these vigils are ruled by slogans that are painted on the cardboard <coughs> and that, that are carried by the vigilants. Then the slogan becomes the thing that you bring across. But in a real vigil, and we have done many vigils, you can do much, much, much more than sloganeering. If you hold a position like you did right now at the end of this airplane flight and being bombarded without, for a length of time, this length of time is the total contrast of the city, of the country, of the civilization that you're in. And it, it's a powerful <coughs> bringing everything down to some simple humanity that, has, that it has lost. And you speak to people that way. You have a powerful element of persuasion there. So vigiling isn't just standing with a slogan and a sign, it is a great possibility for the highest form of theater possible, which is a still position. So <coughs> just that you know, it's available to all of us. And you don't have to go to acting school for it. <laughs> you would only disturb it by going to acting school for it, because you wouldn't be able to do it anymore, because you would have to think all the time, whom am I representing? What exactly am I thinking about? And what's my grandfather thinking while I'm thinking? And by the way, my grandfather seems probably not relevant to this moment, so maybe I should think of my uh, baby girl that's right now poo pooing something. <laughs> no, that's not so good either. So it's a big problem. Actors have terrible problems, and they're mostly ending up in psychiatric institutions. <laughs> <laughs> but when you do a simple thing and you go on your knees and you tear open your mouth, the, this thinking is irrelevant. It's eliminated. It's not necessary because your face is a participant in your whole body. And when you tear open your mouth and leave it open, that itself is the representation of a screen. And the silent scream is an extraordinary scream. And you will speak that way. So, just that you know, it's as simple as that. All right. Now we should practice some of the Yeah, let's do a counter story. Do you, want, do you need a short break or something? No, no. No, no, no. it's okay. So now I want to tell you about something else that I recommend to you, and that's why we are showing it to you. It's something that when I was a kid still existed in all over Europe, in Switzerland, in Italy certainly, in Germany, and so on. And that was called, in German, it's called Moritat, or Benkelsang. Benkelsang because it's done by having a little bench and a stick. And the narrator stands on the <coughs> little bench and with the stick points to a picture mm. or to details in the picture. And uh, it's a family business. It used to be a family business. Mm. And the kids are in charge of selling the music that you sing during the thing to the public. That's how the money is made. And the parents are usually the narrators and the music makers. So it's done with drum and fiddle, or with drum and trumpet, or with bugle and bells. So there are many variations, or with, with stray organ, or with harmonica, or with, uh, <coughs> with uh, accordion, or voice, many, many, many ways of variations. But it's always the same thing. It's PowerPoint and minus technology. So it's the old Stone Age PowerPoint. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's, it's visual, it's painted cardboards or canvases, 
held up in front of the public and these images get narrated, get told, <coughs> like I did last night with this thing about puppetry. So we make every year dozens of these and we take them to various uh, opportunities where they need to be taught to people. So they are very useful for for demos and for political matter because they are, you, you, you can carry them with you, you can use choruses of people to participate in their, uh, in their presentation part, and that's what we want to show you now. So we do a couple of those that we have. And then as you do it, you must realize how easy they are to make, how easy you yourself can create those things. So instead of doing a lot of fussing with papers and paints and so on, <laughs> we just do those with you and you go home and make your own. Okay. Uh, and yeah, they don't, we should doing? say they don't have to be about political stuff necessarily. Well, these aren't particularly, right. but they are. But I mean, just that they are, they, are, they are what you want to tell to people. You know, what you want to tell to people is but when you address public, that is a political act. Whether it avoids politics, or whether it does politics. It's a political act. The address to the public is a political act. Normally, theater doesn't realize that it is political. <laughs> but theater is automatically uh, political. Just as TV is a political institution that dumbifies people, and that's its task. It must make people stupid enough to participate. And uh, by the same token, theater is supposed to make them intelligent. So it's. Uh, it's, it's a job. It's an address to the public, meaning politics. All right, let's do a couple of these politics. <coughs>